Are you looking for an affordable COVID-19, DNA testing, or infectious disease clinical testing? Welcome to P23 Labs, a high complexity molecular diagnostics lab that uses the latest technology to offer a full suite of molecular diagnostic tests, clinical tests, and wellness consultations. We give you access to knowledge and healthcare resources that will transform your health. Schedule an appointment and order your custom test today with our healthcare team www.p23labs.com Yo, what's going on guys? I am live right now. Um, I don't even know what day it is right now. I can't even call it. But what's going on y'all? I'm live right now. Um, we're going to be chopping it up real quick. Let me let everybody on my social media know that I'm live right now. I don't even know what day it is right now. I'm in a whole different hemisphere in the world but welcome to the Tariq radio show live we're on youtube right here let everybody know that we're live right now by the way i'm in dubai right now i'm all the way around the world i'm do i'm in dubai i'll show y'all some of the images on the back but i'm in dubai right now i'm yeah it's like where i am now it's seven in the morning where i am it's seven in the morning right now. Yeah, I'm in Dubai right now. Shout out, to, come on in the room. Let me let everybody come in the room. Let me do this. Let me do a commercial break. Let me let everybody get a chance to get in the room. I'm broadcasting live from Dubai. How's the volume? Somebody said my volume is low. Sometimes they be trolling when they say that. Is my volume good? What's going on? I think my volume, and let me take a listen myself. Hold on one second, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, I'm in Dubai right now. Shout out to, come on in the room. Let me let everybody. Yeah, my volume is fine. I just heard my volume, I'm good. All right, what we're going to do, let's take a real quick commercial break, guys. Let everybody know that we're live, we're in here, and we will be right back after these messages. Yo, it's your boy, Mr. Locario, the bad boy of the dating game. And if you really want to learn how to attract beautiful women, go to badboymembership.com. The bad boy membership gives you step-by-step, easy-to-follow dating advice tutorials every month. You'll also get my documentary, Game Kings, The Definition of Game, for free by joining the Bad Boy Membership. Step up your game today and go to badboymembership.com. That's badboymembership.com. Listen up, squares. You need to get the legendary book on game, The Art of Mackin, by author Tariq King Flex Nasheed. Available on Amazon right now. Can you dig it? This book has been a bestseller for 20 years, Jack. And the New York Times called it a classic. That means it's out of sight. So this book ain't for no lames who ain't trying to learn the game. Jive turkeys. So if you're ready to stop slacking in your macking, get the Art of Macking book on Amazon and Barnes & Noble right now. Sucker. Rated PG. That stands for plenty of game, Jive Chumps. What's up, family? You guys need to check out this cookie company out of Houston, Texas called The Cookie Confidant. Man, they sell these beautiful, delicious, huge cookies right out of Houston, Texas, man. And the brother has been in business since 2017. And I've tried these cookies, man. They are bomb, bomb, bomb. Very delicious. My personal favorite are the chocolate chip pecan cookies, man. They are bomb. Y'all need to go to cookieconfidant.com to get these cookies. Black-owned company, man. They got chocolate chip peanut butter cookies, white chocolate cookies with sprinkles, man. So anything you like in a cookie, they got it. So again, go to cookieconfidant.com. That's cookieconfidant.com. You know that unforgivable heat you feel when you're in a hot city on a hot day and by the time you walk from your ride to your destination, sweat is dripping off your face, you're fried. Well, your cell phones go through the same thing. They overheat and sometimes they go off and never come on again. Here's the solution. You stop the phone fry, the new affordable protective phone carrying case that'll keep your cell phone from frying, no batteries required, fits all cell sizes and unisex. Available now at FriendlyRides.club. Like I'm your friend and rise to the club. FriendlyRides.club, all black owned. Yo, listen up, family. It's going to be a pull-up summer, so you want to stand strong with the blackest t-shirt out this summer. The Black as F 
limited edition t-shirt was created by designer Thad Baltimore and it's available right now at webuyblack.com or at tbaltimore.com. The shirt is black as F and you need to get your black as F t-shirt right now. The esteemed Dr. Francis Chris Wilson taught us that to destroy white supremacy, we must understand what it is and engage in the appropriate counter-racist behaviors. The most impactful counter-racist behavior that any black person can engage in is in the discovery and fulfillment of their unique purpose through daily effective action. However, most of us will never reach our potential because of life's natural constraints and the imposed boundaries of systematic white supremacy. How can we overcome this? Head over to KineticLiving.com and discover the 10-minute strategy our ancient history provides that we can employ every night to strategically increase our daily performance, productivity, and goal achievement by 25%. That's K-E-N-E-T-I-C-L-I-V-I-N-G.com. Do you have a passion for cooking and don't know how to monetize it? I am the owner of multiple food trucks grossing $250,000 a year each, and I can show you how. Learn from my documented successes of running a food truck and get straight to the cash. Sign up for my course at cookyourwaytocash.com. Again, that's cookyourwaytocash.com. Bro, stop playing and start spraying. Leave an op on the ground where you stand. At all costs, yeah, make sure you protect it. Old goon juice, the formula been tested. You can defend yourself. If you find that you need a little help, gotta stay ready. Ain't no love in the street. Pepper spray straight to the face, make them get weak. Get it at ogoonjuice.com. If they thinking you slipping, then tell them to come get them some. If you packing this, you won't be lacking. But shot to the eye in them problems you having. Maximal strip, hit them haters on ground. So you can feel free when you out in the town. Ogoon juice, and don't forget a shirt, man. You gotta stay ready. That evil on lurk. Yeah. You are now tuning into the legendary Tariq Nasheed. I ain't gave a little blood on that bridge and sell my On Tariq Radio. I said, whoever do that paper, your mom's a home. Yo, what's happening? We back. What's going on, guys? I know I'm I'm looking hella sleepy, but we back. What's going on, man? How y'all doing? How's everybody doing? Everybody come on in the room. What is going on with the family? Um, what day is it in the United States? I don't even know what day it is right now. I'm so off. My time is off. My sleep is off. Um, I'm in Dubai right now i'm over here in dubai the lovely dubai very lovely country over here taking care of some stuff i'm going to be in different countries doing some things this week um but i'm in dubai right now and let me tell you some boy dubai is hot hot man dubai is hot man we went to um the place where we're staying we went to the little water park because i brought the kids with me and um it's Thursday? Okay, I thought it was Wednesday out there. Damn. Okay. So it's Thursday night out there? So it's Friday morning here. Okay. Let me... What the, yeah, it's Friday morning here. Okay. Okay, I'm thinking it's Wednesday out there. That's how far off I am. No, they're, they're very cool out here where I'm staying. I'm with the family. I, we didn't get flued out. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, 7 in the morning, 7, 18 a.m. out here in Dubai. Man, dude, we went to the water park yesterday. Man, we almost, everybody had heat strokes. Man, we were sweating like crazy. The people out here, they're used to this. In order to really come out here and do outside activity, you got to be from this region. Because that sun was wearing us out, man. It, it's, it's a lot of nice stuff out here, but you're in the middle of a desert so it ain't no air flowing or nothing even in even if you're in the water park area yeah dubai is like vegas times 10. yes it is dubai is like vegas times 10. yeah yeah you got to do a lot of out indoor activity out here we're going from now on we're going to do a lot of indoor activity it was like 110 i think yesterday yeah so that jet lag is kicking in and um you know, it's all, you know, we're doing what we do. And even the way we got here, you know, we took a one-way flight. We we flew over the dang North Pole. Yeah, we took a real crazy route to get here. So, yeah, this, the heat and the jet lag, is, is it gets at you after a while. Yeah, it's that dry heat. It ain't no air. 
Even if you're sitting in the shade, dude, the shade is still hot. That shade don't be doing nothing. The sun laughs at the shade out here, dude. <laughs> yeah, man, you can't really breathe in that heat, so you got to do a lot of indoor stuff. But anyway, well, I'm here. I'm, again, I'm handling some stuff. I'm, I'm taking care of some things. Um, see, I'm looking a little crispy. Yeah, I've been out in that sun, but that sunblock wasn't doing nothing. Yeah, that sunblock wasn't doing nothing. So, yeah, if you come out here, you might just want to do a lot of um, indoor activity. Yeah, they got they got stuff out here where they can make rain, literally. They got devices where they have to make rain in order to cool it off out here. Yeah, they got to make rain in order to make it, you know, cool it off out here right now. Um, so there's a mist over the city, but it's, it's a very nice place. You should at least come and visit once. Very nice place. Good people. The people are real cool. The people are very cool out here. And I got to watch what I say because out here you can't be talking all reckless on the internet. You, you, you dig? So if I say something, if I get off kilter, y'all remind me where I am. Yeah, you, you, I, can't, I can't get raw, raw on the internet out here. It's a different culture. You know? But um, a lot of stuff we got to talk about. Yeah, 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 I'm using sunscreen, dude. I'm not trying to be walking around here looking like Leatherface. Yeah, this sun ain't no joke out here, man. This sun will tear you up out here. But let's get into some of the things we want to talk about. Today, I'm going to talk about corporate buck breaking. Corporate buck breaking. Buck breaking is for black men and black women. Black men and black women um, get buck broken under the system of white supremacy. We talked about that in the movie Buck Breaking. If you watch the movie Buck Breaking at buckbreakingmovie.com, we talk about how buck breaking not only affects black men, but it affects sisters as well. Yeah, that's true, Jaron. Yeah, they, they, they're kind of strict on a lot of stuff, man. Out here when um, we were in the, the pool area and we were coming back in the hotel and my one of my sons, I brought him inside and he didn't have his shirt on, but they made me go get a towel and cover him up. Like, you're not walking around here with no shirts on. I mean, they're very, they, they for real, for real about stuff out here. Yeah. But listen, I'm going to talk about Ed Buck in a minute. I'm Because all of that is going to tie into what I'm saying. I get on Ed Buck in a minute. Before I get on Ed Buck and all that stuff, listen. Like I said, corporate buck breaking and buck breaking in general, it affects black men and black women. As we know with the Olympics that's going on, they've been buck breaking a lot of or trying to buck break socially and corporately buck break a lot of the black men and women athletes because... They cannot beat them on the field. They have to beat them outside with their system of anti-black racism. As we know, a lot of the black women, they've been disqualified from different events for very arbitrary reasons. Whereas they'll let a white transgender person compete in certain categories. They, they, they do all of these little games the one sister was disqualified because of weed and there was another white woman who was involved in weed. So they played these little anti-black racism games with us. And um, there was some black male athletes, I, I, I think, it was some other black athletes that they said they had too much testosterone naturally in their system to compete. They've been doing little sucker stuff. And our good sister, Simone Biles, Simone Biles, very talented sister, very skillful sister. They've been doing little psychological things to that sister for the longest. And she's such a phenomenal athlete. And our sister did a power move that I love. Yeah, they're talking about we, we got too much testosterone. I mean, it's I'm white and I say so times 10. Yeah. They're doing all types of stuff. So our sister Simone Biles. Um... During the Olympics, she said she's pulling out. She said, yeah, yeah, I'm one of the best and I can bring this thing home. But you know what? Psychologically, you know, my mind ain't really where it needs to be. 
Now, psychologically, you know, I'm having some mental psychological issues. I'm going through psychological fatigue, so I'm about to step down. And boy, the white supremacists are mad at her. And I take my hat off to that sister because I look at that as a silent protest, which is what it is. And the white supremacists know this. Let's be very clear. That's a silent protest. That is a silent protest. You then? She's the best. She knows she's the best. And they're like, look, since y'all keep being funny style with the black athletes, well, let me be funny style too. She pulled out on their ass. I love that. And the white supremacists understand what it is. That's why they're mad. Oh, they've been talking real greasy about her. This sister has had to deal with anti-black racism. I mean, this sister, from what I understand, one of her trainers didn't, didn't she get sexually violated by one of her white trainers? You understand? So not only that, you, you, black people got this thing where we have to compete, we have to be the best, and then not only on top of us competing and learning our craft, then we got to deal with a whole different thing of systematic white supremacy. Are they going to use systematic racism to arbitrarily disqualify us, to arbitrarily penalize us for some things that they don't do with other people? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, man, I, I take my hat off to this sister because, see, the, the dominant white society, they treat us like plantation mules. We're supposed to just run. We're supposed to be these physical animals that just run, 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 run. Our bodies and our minds are supposed to take all types of abuse and fatigue for them so that they can benefit fit off of it, so they can make money off of it, so they can get accolades and, and trophies off of our hard work only to disrespect us. And then on top of that, what's interesting about the Olympics, they told us we have to deal with all the systematic anti-black racism and we can't even protest anti-black racism at the Olympics. They didn't told the black athletes at the Olympics, don't be putting up no fists, don't be talking about black lives this and don't be talking about injustice. They didn't put a ban on the black athletes talking about injustice. So they've been practicing anti-black racism all the way around. So our sister pulled a power move on them, and I love it. I ain't mad at her. So now they're mad. The white supremacists, they all, the, those racist white sports writers who I've been talking about for the longest, they've been talking greasy about this sister, and not just sports writers. Some of the other white supremacists and the suspected white supremacists, they've been joining in, especially some of the so-called right-wing white supremacists, um, Charlie Kirk, a very infamous suspected white supremacist. Hold on. Let me play him talking about our sister. And, you know, this guy, his organization, Turning Points USA, they've been called out for the vile anti-black racism connected to this organization. This is nothing but a, a low-key white supremacist organization pretending to be a political organization. Hold on. Simone Biles, who's obviously a very talented gymnast, decided not to compete in the gold medal competition. Now, she probably could have just competed and just kind of checked the boxes and they would have got a gold medal. Simone Biles says, this Olympic Games, I wanted to be for myself when I came in and I felt like I was still doing it for other people as she cried after the team event on Tuesday. So that just, it like hurts my heart because Doing what I love has been kind of taken away from me to please other people. Yeah, that's the point, Simone Biles. You're representing your nation, you selfish, you're selfish sociopath. Are you kidding me? Today, it's like, you know what? I'm not going to do something stupid and get hurt. It's just not worth it, especially when you have like three amazing athletes that can step up to the plate and do it. So you know who has the gold medal? Russia. Russia. I have to go look at these four foot eleven Russian Olympi Olympians chewing on their gold medals, smirking at the Americans. I'm not okay with that. We're but not, honestly, that's we're, where we're headed. We're not okay with your racism, Charlie. We are raising a generation of weak people like Simone Biles. Again, if you want to be... If, if she got all these mental health problems, don't show up. If she's an incredible athlete. Of course she's an incredible athlete. I'm not saying... I just said she's probably the greatest gymnast of all time. She's also very selfish she's immature and she is a shame to the country 
She's uh, totally a sociopath. Of course she's a sociopath. Okay. Andrew says okay. she's not a sociopath. So this is disgusting, filthy, white supremacist suspect, Charlie Kirk, who is a complete moron who hasn't achieved anything in life. He has no talent or skill to speak of. Charlie Kirk is dependent upon white supremacy to eat every day if it were not for a socialist system of white supremacy lifting this loser up Charlie Kirk would starve to death Car Charlie Kirk is the most talentless person on the planet and talentless people like this they need the welfare system of white supremacy white supremacy is a socialist welfare system to elevate mediocre white supremacists who cannot compete to elevate them to a certain level above starvation they cannot compete and they love projecting their own ineptness onto us that's him projecting his white supremacist insecurities onto that sister that's a talented sister she is a very talented sister and it's not her job to be the plantation mule for white supremacists who's not going to appreciate her efforts anyway i take my hat off to that sister I take my hat off to that sister. We need more black people to get codified like that. And now, now overtly, she has to, you know, play the game. Oh, I was just dealing with mental health issues. And yeah, that's that. She's playing the game, you know, which is what you do. But she's on code. Yeah, if you guys are going to have this anti-black racism and this attitude towards us, we'll let Russia get this thing. I already got my medals. She already got a gang of medals. She's like, hey, what's one more? I ain't tripping on one more. Hell, I keep, I can rack up medals every day and y'all still act funny style towards me. So, hey, won't you let Russia get a piece of that? She knew it would chap their ass. She knew it would get under their skin. Yeah. But see, they look at us as plantation mules. See, they thought they had her good and buck broken. Remember, that sister was sexually violated by white people who were training her and the doctors and all that. They didn't though. It was white people who were sitting up talking about that sister's hair. They tried to make it seem like it was black people. No, it was white people. Remember when they were going in on that sister's hair? It was white people doing that. They tried to make it seem like it was black people. No, it was white people doing that. White people making little slick racist remarks about that sister. And then on top of that, they're doing a little racist slick stuff at the olympics now so yeah she's like i got y'all now yeah i'm one of the best ones out here and yeah i'm gonna use my leverage to to get on up out of here if y'all not gonna do the right thing yeah yeah notice he didn't call the white girls who were losing weak so they gotta do little stuff like that because you know the, the, the white girls can't really compete they can't get out there look the white supremacists are very insecure because in these categories, they got to do all types of, of, of moving the goalposts in women's categories. You know, they, when the black women are competing, they got to disqualify them for all, the, all of these little arbitrary reasons. In other categories where the white girls can't really compete, they got to go put a wig on a white man and let him compete as a woman. That's racial insecurity, guys. That's racial insecurity. You got to put a, a, a sundress and a wig on a white man and let him compete as a white woman in order for them to beat other people, in order for them to compete. Think about the insecurity that comes behind that. Yeah? Everybody hit that thumbs up button, hit that like button. And by the way, shout out to everybody who has contributed to the campaign for the Hidden History Museum. Let's take a look at where we are. Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're doing good still. We got 20 days to go. We're actually doing very good still. Um, we need to get over that 300K hump. Let's do that within the next couple of days, ladies and gentlemen. Let me show y'all where we are now in, in little over a week. We started the campaign just a week ago, a little over a week ago. This is where we are now, ladies and gentlemen, on Indiegogo. We're at almost a quarter of the goal. We're at two hundred and forty five thousand right now we still got 20 days left so we still good 
We're looking very, very good, ladies and gentlemen. And remember, this is a fixed goal. Remember, the campaign will only get its funds if we reach that $1 million by the deadline. We got to get that million or we're not going to get anything. So we're doing great right now, guys. We need to keep that momentum going. By the end of this evening, let's get to 300K. Let's get that to that landmark. Let's get to that milestone. Let's try to get there by this evening. And we still got 20 days left, so we, we want to get to the goal early. We want to get to the goal early, but we're doing phenomenal so far. And remember, this is a grassroots effort. This is a grassroots movement right here, and we are doing it. And it's looking good, ladies and gentlemen. So we need everybody to get involved. Yes, yes, we should have more athletes and entertainers and all those people. We do need a lot of our brothers and sisters in the industry. We need them putting in, but we're not going to depend on that. We're not going to depend on that. Look, we could have got to that goal within the first couple of days. But again, we're going to do it one way or the other. And what we see now at that quarter of a million, we're almost at a quarter of a million right now. That's because of you, brothers and sisters, on the grassroots. I want us to understand we can get stuff done on a grassroots level without you know, certain people. Now, it would help, but we can get stuff done. We can get stuff popping. Not only do we get it popping, we're getting it popping, and there's opposition. We're getting this thing popping, and there is opposition to what we're trying to do. Not only from the dominant society, but also from the Sambo sector in our society. I'll get on that in a minute. I get on that in a minute. Yeah. I get on that in a minute. But again, I got a shout out to all the um, the B1 family, the 300. What's up, my sister? My girl Pinky is in here. Shout out to my sister, my girl Pinky is in here. But we 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 got it looking good right now. We're gonna get this thing done. Yeah, a lot of rappers go out here and pay 100k for jewelry. Yeah, they they pay 50,000 for the strip joints or whatever. But hey, we do need them brothers and sisters to put in and to tap in with us, but again, we're going to get this thing done one way or the other. We're going to get it done. I'm going to yeah, I'll talk about Facebook in a minute. There's some other stuff I want to get popping. I want to talk about the situation with the rapper The Baby. Now, as you know, um, the rapper the baby he's being attacked heavy by the white supremacists and their plantation minions the rapper the baby was at the rolling loud concert down in Miami and he said something to the effect of he was doing a kind of a call and response thing that's kind of typical in hip-hop he was like hey anybody with AIDS if you ain't got AIDS you ain't got no sexual diseases y'all make some noise now, y'all know that's been something that's been, that's a chant that's been going on since the 80s. Everybody, if you, everybody with AIDS, be quiet. Everybody with gonorrhea, be quiet. And everybody starts yelling. That's kind of a, that's a hip hop chant, man. That's been going on since the 80s. So, he also said, yo, all the ladies in here, if you're, but JJ smells like water, make some noise. Dudes, if you're in the parking lot sucking, make some noise. And then all of a sudden, he's just doing regular hip hop chants or whatever. So now the white media and the corporate buck breakers, they tried to say that was homophobic. So now they're going on this extra crusade to persecute him for being homophobic. Nothing the baby said was homophobic. The baby didn't say anything homophobic. He didn't say anything about the gay community. He didn't say anything about the LGBT community. He didn't say anything homophobic. I want y'all to understand this. He didn't say anything homophobic, but they've made a real big movement out of labeling him homophobic. Family, I want y'all to understand corporate buck breaking. Yeah, they made him apologize, and he's still trying to stand strong. But he, I, I hope he understands apologizing, that ain't, that ain't what it is. 
they are just going to use him as a proxy to get to us. Understand, when they do stuff like this, when the white corporate media, when they do little moves like this, this is them using a black public figure that they've elevated as a proxy to attack all of us. Where, where they try to corporate bully and then corporately buck break this man. The baby did not say anything homophobic. All they did was use the I'm white and I say so narrative, which is typical of white supremacy. We better understand how this game works. This is the problem when they use the I'm white and I say so narrative. See, back in the day, when and they've always done this, they've always made false claims against black people. I, I did a, an interview with the LA Times, and I'm, I think the article comes out tomorrow, and I wanna see how this is gonna go, because it might be some slander in there to me, because they were asking me stuff about Bill Cosby. So I, I wanna see how that LA Times article goes. I, I, can, I can smell a twist, but I'm used to it. I'm used to people, you know, trying to slander me. I'm, I'm like, whatever because I stand on truth. But part of white supremacist culture, and I talked to the reporter about this, because we we're talking about Bill Cosby, and I was talking about how there were false accusations against Bill Cosby, and she was just so shocked. Oh my God, really? Yes, really. I believe many of the accusations against Cosby was false, which is typical of white supremacist culture. The same thing with this, this the baby thing. They literally lied on this man and said that he was being homophobic and he was not. And I want black folks to never co-sign that. See, this is where getting on code comes in. They used to do that all during Jim Crow. They would make false accusations against black people because that's the way for the white supremacists to exercise power, for them to verbally lie on an innocent black person and then punish a black person based on the lie, to them is the ultimate form of power in white supremacy. They have the power to lie on a black person and then control the lives of black people after they lie on them. Where black people, we can't do that. If we make an accusation against a white person, we need another white person to co-sign us. You understand? Before they get punished. Unless it's going to be pull up summer. That's why they don't like pull up summer. Because when it's pull up summertime, we ain't going through the white people no more. It's like we're going to handle this thing on our own. That's where they start copping please they don't want us to get there you see that's why pull up summer that's why pull up summer kind of shakes them up a little bit when it when it's pull up summer they get a little act right yeah but listen part of their culture is lying on black people now back in the day when they did that and everybody hit that thumbs up button hit that subscribe button hit the thumbs up button hit the subscribe button now, back in the day when they lied on black people, other black people in the community, we got on code with each other to try to at least protect the families of the black people who were being lied on. We never co-signed the white supremacists. What we have now, we have coons and sambos co-signing the white supremacists. So when these white supremacists are attacking black people, you got certain pockets of Negroes who sit here and big up the white supremacists and co-sign them. And that's the major difference that we didn't have back during Jim Crow. You dig? We have to understand lying on black people is a part of white supremacist culture. Now, who are the Negroes that we see today co-signing the white supremacists when they lie? Well, you have three types. You have three types of Negroes who do the co-signing. And we see this, for example, with the whole situation with the rap of the baby. Even, even with Bill Cosby, we saw the same types of people co-signing the white supremacists. For, during the Bill Cosby situation, it was the same type of Negroes co-signing those racist white supremacists who were orchestrating this Cosby thing. Number one, you have people who work within white liberal establishments. That's number one, the Mark Lemoyne Hill, Mark Lemoyst Hills, and, the, and Mark Lemoyst Hill is a double whammy, by the way. I get on him in a minute. You have black people who work for liberal white corporate um, um, entities. That's the first type. So that's why you'll see 
some of these Negroes who work at these record labels or who work for these record companies or these radio stations, well, the baby shouldn't be doing all that. They're bucking their eyes because they need a job. That's number one. And that's a, that's a small handful, but it's a significant one because they'll push those Negroes out there. So in order for them to keep their job, they got to side with white people against another black person. You understand? Number two, you have the immigrant coons. That's number two. They are the main ones that we see. Whenever you see a white person or white liberals attacking a black person or black celebrity it's foreign flag fiesta you see a bunch of foreign flags jumping in co-signing the white supremacists against that black person particularly if that black person is a foundation of black american let me go back a minute yeah somebody said the breakfast club i, I haven't i haven't listened to the to the, um, to the breakfast club i don't know what their opinion of it is so i haven't heard that i saw quest love i think he kind of you know, said something against the baby, which was very unfortunate. Questlove had a documentary that's on Hulu right now. I think it's called Summer of Soul, which is actually very good. Questlove has a very good documentary that he, I think he directed or produced called Summer of Soul that talks about this soul festival that was in New York in 1969, I think. And it was actually very, very good. So, you know, I, I would wish our brother was a little more on code and I say that to our brother Quest Love. Quest Love, no, don't. Some things you got to be on code about publicly. And I think the baby has addressed him to brothers like Quest Love and all these folks. Y'all got to chill on that. Y'all got to kind of chill on that. A lot of people within the industry, they think they're going to get some brownie points from their white benefactors. You dig? See, that's corporate. That's where the buck breaking comes in. See, the baby is not, he's not buck broken yet. He's still kind of fighting it. The buck broken people are the ones who sitting up here co signing the white supremacists against that dude. We got to be on code about that, especially if you are a foundation of black America. Now, I understand a lot of these foreign tethers who already have vitriol towards us. They can't wait to throw us under the bus. Why? Because a black American, a foundational black American being attacked by white people, they celebrate that because that's a Negro who's getting pulled out of the way so that they can come in and take their place. Those foreign, the, the, the foreign coon class, and, and not all of the people who are from the diaspora are from that foreign coon class. For example, we got a lot of brothers and sisters from the Caribbean, from Africa, who's supporting our project. So we, got, we do have a lot of riders. In fact, when we get the museum going, we want to have a section talking about some real um, non-FBA allies from, from the diaspora. We want to talk about the Garveys and the Stokely Carmichaels. We want to talk about some of those real riders. But we are going to talk about those tethers who want to sit here and undermine us because they think that if we get taken out, they'll be our replacement. Those are the main ones who's always co-signing the white supremacist against a foundational black American. We see the foreign flags going crazy, siding with the white supremacists. And then the third type you see are the black LGBT sambos. These Negroes think that they are some type of different ethnic group outside of black society. So they think that their sexuality brings them in closer proximity to the white LGBT community. So they think that they're some kind of buffer class so a lot of these black LGBT Negroes are really jumping in the mix trying to get some attention. They know being contrary against black society and off code with black society, that's going to possibly get them some attention from white people. And unfortunately, black people have been so psychologically beat down, we think, a lot of black folks think that attention is currency. And a lot of these black LGBT dudes caping for the white supremacists who can't stand your guts by the way y'all sitting out here trying to get brownie points from the same white people that's they're the ones who's really killing you and they're the ones who's discriminating against you yeah that's where the buck breaking has come in see they have they've been buck broken and they want everybody else buck broken yeah this is why it's so important for us to own certain things that 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 we in, indulge in ownership is very important because if we're 
economically and financially beholden to them, you're always going to be a buck breaking, buck breaking, buck broken do boy to them. You're always going to act like you're buck broken and you got to go along with their nonsense. But if you are a foundation of black American, you should know better than to be off code like that. You should know better. And what's interesting about this thing with the baby, you know, you got your little handful of Negro minions trying to jump in the mix and get brownie points. And then you have people like Elton John. Elton John then jumped up <coughs> talking about he's going to condemn the baby for his HIV comments and uh, HIV and the stigma with HIV and um, stigma of HIV and gay people. Hold on. Let me see the actual quote. Elton John can go to hell. Elton John can go to hell with that. No, you know, see, that's what we're not going to do. We're not going to play that game. No, what we're not going to do is play that damn game. And when Elton John's popped up to say something about, hold on. So the white media, boy, they're just really loving this. See, this is how they get on code against us. And you off code Negroes are off code. See, this is Elton John right here. Elton John schools the baby after rapper's homophobic HIV AIDS comment. Now remember, the baby never said anything about gay people or anything. He didn't say anything homophobic. And as far as he, him talking about dudes blowing each other in a parking lot, well, dudes shouldn't be doing that. That's just a safe sex thing. You shouldn't be doing each other in a damn parking lot. Women shouldn't be doing that in a parking lot. So let's, let's not even go there. The music icon took to Twitter after the rapper's comments drew fire from fans. Hold on. John, who isn't particularly active on social media, the first tweet shares a graphic from the Elton John's AIDS Foundation. HIV misinformation and homophobia has no place in the music industry. We must break down the stigma around HIV not spread it. Well, he can go to hell. His tweet said, HIV has affected over 70 million people globally, men, women, and children, as well as disproportionately high HIV rates among gay men. Okay, let, let's stop that. Let's stop with some fake concern about gay black men, okay? Okay, this is what they do. Elton John can kiss my ass. Elton John made a song back in the 70s about a, a Jamaican man having sex with a transvestite prostitute, Okay. Was it Island Girl or something? He made a song. So Elton John has always been funny style. Elton John made a bunch of slick comments about Michael Jackson, talking about Michael Jackson is mentally ill. Nigga, Elton John can kiss my ass. Let me watch my mouth here. No, Elton John sat up here, and when Eminem rapped about a whole bunch of stuff that is really homophobic, Eminem said a whole bunch of stuff that was real reckless. If you're going to go there, I mean, I, I, it's freedom of speech freedom of expression, but Eminem said a whole bunch of stuff. If the baby never said anything about anybody gay, Eminem has rapped about gay people and said a bunch of stuff. And Elton John was all on stage, hugged up with Eminem. No, 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 no they're, they're not going to play that game. And y'all sambos, y'all buck broken buffoons who go along with that, you are a coward. You are a coward. Elton John, not only that, remember, back in the 80s, Elton John would play racist South Africa when a lot of black artists were like, we're not going to play in the apartheid regime of South Africa. Elton John was playing Sun City. Oh, yeah, Eminem called his name, right? So, look, Elton John was out here playing in racist South Africa and Sun City when it was not the business to do so and people knew that you were supporting a white supremacist regime. No, this man, Elton John, see, this is why these, these, these white liberals who you think is an ally, no, they get on code with white supremacy. No, Elton John ain't nobody that y'all should be co-signing. And what's interesting, a lot of these foreign flag sambos, you can, and I told y'all about some of these foreign flag sambos, they look at the British as an extension of them. They look at themselves as dark Britons. Because I saw a lot of these foreign flag sambos. Ooh, Sir Elton John stepped down from his throne to get that nigga, the baby, to get him straight. 
you better tell him, Sir Elton John. Yes, all that. Eh, Y'all sound like buck broken buffoons. Y'all sound like buck broken buffoons, dude. They, these white supremacists stay on code with each other. Black people need to stay on code. Yeah, I, I saw a lot of y'all from those 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 British colonies, Jamaica, so in the Caribbean. A lot of y'all be co-signing that stuff that goes on in Britain, that white supremacy. They were co-signing that because, again, a, a lot of them, Trinidadians and all, a lot of them because they think that they're part of the British Empire. They think they're just dark Britons. And they were sitting up here co-signing that nonsense. So did Madonna speak out too? She can shut the hell up too. Yeah, this is all of them getting on code against black people. What what did Madonna, oh, let me Google, because I'm getting a lot of information as we're getting it in now. Let me see something. Somebody said Madonna, I know her ass. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Madonna, oh, okay, Ma okay, Madonna can go to hell too. Okay, this just came out. Madonna can kiss my ass. Let me watch my mouth. I'm in Dubai. I can't talk like this online. Madonna can, man, hold on, dude. Madonna got a bunch of buck broken kids in her house. She done adopted some kids and they running around switching. Madonna says people like the baby are why we're still living in a world divided by fear. Madonna can go to hell, dude. Madonna can go to hell. Madonna got these black adopted kids switching around her house. They done, she done buck broken her kids. I posted a video not too long ago. One of her adopted sons are running, running around the house in a dress. You see how they get on code against us? And this is why I see black folks then sat up here and invited these people to the barbecue. They think because, and I was having an argument with a white supremacist the other day because we're talking about Ed Buck. And that's another thing. Where Has Madonna spoken against Ed Buck? Has Elton John spoken against Ed Buck? Because see, Ed Buck, that trial is was just going on this week. Notice all of these people who got all the smoke for the rapper the baby. None of these people talked about the black gay men who were getting killed by Ed Buck. In fact, Ed Buck was never charged with murder. Ed Buck, he got convicted, but on some little janky weak charge. Ed Buck never got charged with murdering these black men, these multiple black men that kept getting pulled out of his house dead. They were protecting, the white LGBT community protected um, um, Ed Buck for years. It was the black grassroots who had to run up there in Ed Buck's house. They had to stand outside of his house to help try to get this man convicted. Black folks fought for years just to get this man charged. It took years to get Ed Buck just charged. And the only reason he got charged is because black people kept making so much noise and black men kept getting pulled out of his house on stretches. It got to the point where they can't just keep protecting this dude. None of them have said anything about Ed Buck. Any black person co-signing these liberal suspected white supremacists, you're a coward. Especially if you're a black gay person. You have dead black gay people at the hands of a, of a white supremacist, Ed Buck. Ed, listen, we always forget about Ed Buck. This is why they're so quiet about Ed Buck. Ed Buck is a white supremacist. Ed Buck was sitting up there bringing these black men in his home, drugging them up, calling them all types of niggas, doing slave play with them, dressing them up, getting these poor black men, and doing all types of weird racist stuff to them. Ed Buck was a white supremacist and a liberal white supremacist. They get on code with, general, with, with liberal white supremacists. Let's be very clear. They haven't said anything about Ed Buck. And then Madonna has the nerve to say that the baby is the reason why there's divisiveness. Man, Madonna can kiss. I, 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 wanna, I wish I could say what I want to say, but I'm in Dubai. You can't be saying very bad things on the internet. <laughs> I'm respecting the country I'm in. I'm respecting the country I'm in. This is white supremacy getting on code. This is them getting on, and, and some of these Negroes out here, some of these black LGBT dudes, y'all just want attention. 
this is an opportunity. Some of y'all are so off code, it's damn ridiculous. Y'all hate black society. Y'all out here trying to get brownie points from these white people. Y'all think, oh, the baby, he ain't shit. Y'all better, that's y'all niggas. Let's be real. Y'all niggas are getting attention because you understand that the white supremacists will use your ass to badger black people. So they'll pretend to listen to you. They'll pretend that you're a part of the movement with them. And just being acknowledged by white people, that's, that melts your heart. Let's be real. A lot of y'all niggas, man, y'all just, if white people acknowledge you, that's all you need in life. You feel like you have arrived. So you sit up here and you be the do boys for the white LGBT community when they sitting up here protecting Ed Buck for killing you and protecting the Jeffrey Dahmers for killing you and protecting the Ronald Dominiques for, for, for killing you. Ronald Dominique, that's another white supremacist who was out here in New Orleans killing black men by the dozens. And the white media never tells you about this guy. This was about a decade or so ago. We talked about Ronald Dominique in the movie Buck Breaking. There's a white man down in New Orleans, white LGBT dude who was raping and killing black men all around Louisiana. Dozens of them. Most of y'all never heard of this guy, Ronald Dominique. They, they were so hush-hush about this dude and they're hush-hush about him now. They're on code with each other. See, that's why they want to buck break you. They understand when, when they buck break a black person, that black person is going to be a useful tool. That's why they love buck breaking you. Because now if you are a black man and your desire to be sexually involved with a white man, because that's really what the goal is, a lot of these buck broken dudes, they want to lay up with white men. If your goal is to lay up with a white man, you ain't going to fight no damn white supremacy. If your goal is to lay up with white supremacy, the last thing you're going to do is fight it. You're going to protect white supremacy at all costs. Let's be very clear. So this is them getting on code against us. And silly, cowardly Negroes should never co-sign that. And all of these organizations, they're on code with each other. The, the GLAD organization, they didn't came out. Remember, GLAD, GLAD released a statement in response to the baby's homophobic comments. Okay, they, this is them being very extra. The gay, lesbian, whatever. They haven't done anything about Ed Buck. Remember, when black people were like, hey, there's dead black gay men being targeted by Ed Buck. Why don't y'all say something? They were quiet as church mice. They didn't say nothing. Glad and all these people were quiet. And they're still quiet. And they understand what being on code is about. They understand that they have to buck break black society as a group and they have to use heterosexual black people in order to facilitate that. And what they do the white supremacist establishment, they like to use gay black men against black society so that they can hide their racism. See, what they do, they hide their racism behind gay black men. That's why I was talking about that video by the rapper Lil Nas X. This, the record company he's on, these white executives set up and put together a music video where there were black men twerking in prison, butt naked, and the black men were violating each other in prison. That was one of the most racist music videos that we have seen. And they hide their racism behind gay black men. And they love to put the Lil Nas X's out here to gaslight people. So if we call out the racism behind the record label and Lil Nas X facilitating that, well, they use him to say, okay, we're just being homophobic towards him. That's why Lil Nas X has been hopping on social media talking about how people don't like him because he's gay. That's his job to be the crash dummy for the white supremacists. If we don't like his trash music, let's be clear, and I said this on social media many times, Lil Nas X is a trash, one-hit wonder novelty rapper with no talent. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of trash, one-hit wonder novelty rappers with no talent. And don't tell me about some of his other records that were hits. Though The record label, basically, they know how to boost streams. They got all types of Russian... Um, bot machines where they can boost up your Spotify streams. I don't believe for one minute that Lil Nas X's other records genuinely went gold and platinum. 
The record labels are infamous for having bot machines over there in Russia where they can boost people's streams to make it seem like they got more record sales than they do. That's why Lil Nas X, you don't see this dude going on no tour. You don't see him actually doing a concert because Lil Nas X does not have a real organic fan base. There's a bunch of troll bots that are seemingly purchased by the record label to act as a fan base online, but he doesn't have a genuine organic fan base. That's why you do not see, and I pointed this out many times, you don't see a Lil Nas X tour or a Lil Nas X concert where people are going to pay money to see Lil Nas X. If this dude got all these hits, you would see this dude performing live. And I ain't talking about being featured on a festival somewhere. I'm talking about how all these other rappers, you got rappers who ain't had records out in years or hit records out in years, and you can see them in clubs, packing clubs, performing all the time. They try to say, well, Lil Nas X don't be performing because of COVID. That's a bunch of BS. That's a bunch of BS. He doesn't have an organic fan base. He's an industry tool. He's used to badger and attack black society. Yeah? No. Somebody said the baby represents the baby, but you don't understand white supremacy. See, you don't understand white supremacy. To you, he represents the baby. To them, he represents all of us. He's a proxy, just like Bill Cosby was a proxy for all of us. He was a proxy. Like Lil Nas X, he's a proxy of the white supremacist. He's a, a tool. He's used so that they can put him out there to badger us and put out these crazy racist ass images. And if we criticize that, they'll just say we're homophobic against him. That's a con game that they're running. Nobody's homophobic against this dude. We just, you're trash, one hit wonder rapper, and we don't like the fact that you have to rely on gimmicks. Everything you put out is a gimmick because you don't have no talent. We don't have a black people. We never have a, had a problem with black gay artists. We've been supporting black gay artists since Ma Rainey, who's a lesbian, um, Bessie, um, what's her name? I want to say Bessie Coleman. I think that's, I can't think of her last name. But we've been supporting black artists who were gay and lesbian for years. Little Richard. We knew what Little Richard, we knew his get down. We supported Little Richard. Everybody knew what Little Richard get down was. We supported him. Luther Vandross, everybody knew what Luther Vandross's get down was. We supported Luther Vandross. We had no problem with that. Why? Because Luther Vandross was talented. Luther Vandross didn't rely on gimmicks. Little Richard, I mean, Luther Vandross didn't, he, this man was pure talent. We, everybody knew what Luther's get down was. That's why at one point Luther stopped having women in his videos, you know, back in, he stopped being in videos with women. He would be singing somewhere and then there would be another couple somewhere. Everybody knew what Luther, you know, we knew what Luther's get down was. Frank Ocean, we like, we know what, we like Frank Ocean. Frank Ocean is talented. Yeah, Luther was flaming. Luther was flaming. We ain't had no problem with that because he had talent. You coming out every week talking about how much you like sucking on men and I, all right, nigga, all right, all right, now, now make a good record, dude. If you cannot make a record without you gaslighting and talking about how much you like spreading your bussy, you ain't really got no talent. Just like women rappers too. They try to now they try to compare it to women. Will women be out here throwing they will, they be popping it cool? But dude, we had a problem with all the thought culture in a lot of the records too. That WAP record, a lot of us had a problem with it. A lot of it was kind of over the top. A lot of it was over the top. So yeah, we, we have a problem with a lot of that stuff that is supposed to represent black culture. We have a lot of we have a problem with a lot of it. Yeah? But yeah, dude, okay, yeah, we get it. You like dudes. Now, make a record that's good, dude. Okay, yeah, we, you, okay, you like dudes. Bravo. Now, make a record that's good. No, I'm about to make a record with me having sex with dudes in the video now while we in prison. Okay, that's a gimmick, dude. You're doing gimmick stuff. And see, what we don't like is that stuff being marketed to kids. See, what they'll do with Lil Nas X, they gave him a, a book deal to do a children's book, so they... They knew that children are gonna be kind of following this dude and then they turn around and have this dude doing butt naked bussy bopping videos. Eh. Because see, now it's getting into some pedophile type of stuff, which we ain't with that. 
Now that's getting into soft core pedophile stuff. We ain't with it. And don't be ashamed to not be with it. See, this is where the buck breaking comes in. Shout out to certain other rappers who are speaking against the buck breaking. There's a lot of, a lot of people kind of pushing back. You do have some people pushing back against the buck breaking. You do have people pushing back, and that's good. Yeah? But all of these Elton Johns and Madonnas, and they, they need to stop. Because we got to understand what how these people are on code against us. And, 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 and especially if you're an FBA, you really should know better. Sometimes just keep your mouth shut. Don't sit here co-signing these people when they are getting on code against us. And a perfect example of them getting on code against us, down in Crenshaw, where we're trying to get our museum. And by the way, hit that link for the Hidden History Museum. Everybody hit that link, the Hidden History Museum link right below. Out there on Crenshaw Boulevard, you know, they've, they've been trying to buy the Crenshaw Mall. There was a black organization that was clicked in with some liberals and all this stuff, but they were trying to get, they're trying to purchase the Crenshaw Mall. It was a South LA community group, downtown Crenshaw. So they got with some other people and they got some money to buy the Crenshaw Mall. They put the bid in. Let me show y'all this. Let me show y'all this. South LA Community Group, this story came out this week, loses bid to acquire Crenshaw Mall despite offering the most money. Now, family, people out here in LA, well, I'm, I'm saying here, but back home in LA, they're trying to save the Crenshaw Mall, okay? So there was a black organization working with some corporate people and they got some money, $115 million and put in a bid to buy the Crenshaw Mall. Another development group, a white run development group, actually had the offer given to them and they offered less money. So the black connected group offered more money and still got turned down to buy the Crenshaw Mall. This is them being on code. I want y'all to understand how them being on code, this is what on code means. Because sometimes with them, it ain't even about money. It's about control. I want y'all to understand how this thing works. And I want y'all to see how deep this thing is. These folks were trying to get this, the mall. Now who is this organization who, who got the bid? Who's the organization? Let me read some part of the story here because I want to go slow with this thing. This is kind of heavy here. Um, da, 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 da. What's the name of this? The, Har the Harridge Group. What's it called? The Harridge Development Group, okay? It's an organization called the Harridge Development Group. Okay? And I want y'all to look at this link right here. Hold on. Horridge won the bid with financial backing from Russian-American billionaire oil tycoon Leonard Blavatnik. What? Blavatnik. Okay, Leonard Blavatnik. Hold on to that name right there. So, the Crenshaw Mall, and from what I understand, a lot of other areas around Crenshaw, this particular guy right here is trying to uh oh, my stream is looking funny. Hold on. I'm, okay, there you go. My stream kind of went off. Now follow me for a minute. Lynn Lobotnik. Now hold on to that name for a second. Hold on to that name. This Russian guy, who's actually, this Lynn Lobotnik, Blavotnik is one of the wealthiest men in, in Europe. He's a very wealthy man in Europe. Okay? And they were talking about this guy on some of the local radio stations in Europe. Listen. I mean, not what am I saying? Huh? They were talking about him on the local radio stations in Los Angeles. They were talking about him on the local radio stations in Los Angeles, talking about this guy and his connections. Yeah, some people are saying that this, and um, let me be real careful with my words. Some people were saying that this guy was clicked in with the Russian mafia. 
allegedly, I'm just reporting what's being said. Listen, and on the downtown Crenshaw website, on a Twitter page, but they got a lot of receipts on this guy. Hold on, because this is kind of heavy. Exposing Lynn Blavatnik, the racist, corrupt, Soviet-born oligarch put on Putin's list trying to gentrify black LA. So this guy, there's a thing with this guy and the Russians trying to gentrify black Los Angeles. Okay, they're talking about this dude's wealth and some of the questionable transactions he's made to get his wealth and how he's clicked in with Putin. So this guy's been involved in shady deals. Some people have said this guy was connected to the Russian mafia. Uh, I'm, I'm just reading the news, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. So this guy is clicked in with the Clintons and Trump, and he's a real clicked in dude. Another thing about this guy, okay, so this is a clicked in dude. Okay, this is a clicked in guy. This, listen, they really want to get that area down there in LA. Yeah, some people are saying this guy's tied in with the Russian mob. Now I want y'all to understand that Russian mafia thing, they're really clicked in with the police, especially in Los Angeles. I want y'all to follow me. I'm, I'm just kind of putting some strings together. A lot of those Russian mafia types are clicked in with LAPD. Y'all remember the movie Training Day about you know Denzel's character, Alonzo? He's a part of LAPD and he had some things, he had some kind of shady deal or something going on with him and the Russians and he had to pay the Russians off. That's a real thing. I want y'all to follow me. Let me connect some of these dots here to show y'all how serious this thing is. The Russians, especially that Russian mafia, they really clicked in with a lot of the stuff that goes on with police. You understand? Bobby Hemet was telling us this back in the day, how the Russians and law enforcement are real clicked in. Okay? Remember with Bill Cosby, when his son got killed? It was the Russians behind that. They arrested, the guy who got arrested was a Russian dude who was a Russian white supremacist who was clicked in with that whole mafia thing. So that's the thing. This is not a conspiracy. This is a thing. I'm, I'm just laying out some facts here, but I'm being very careful with my words here. Now listen. So you got this Russian dude. People are saying mafia connected, trying to gentrify black Los Angeles. All up and down Crenshaw, which we know is going to be prime real estate. We know that is going to be prime real estate. We've been telling you this. This is why we're trying to get the land there. Listen, we know that Nipsey, and y'all know how I feel about what happened to Nipsey. I've always said from day one, and I never faltered from this, I've always said that I think the LAPD had something to do with that. I've said that day one. I've always said that. That is not a coincidence that our brother got taken out like that. See, we better stop thinking everything is a conspiracy. Sometimes you better believe some conspiracies are real, but some conspiracies have some merit to it. I'm being, I'm going to be very careful with what I'm saying. I want to, let me be very careful with what I'm saying. Let me take it slow. Let me take it slow. See, this is why we don't be scared. We walk right into it. Let's, we got to get into it. Hold on. Let me, hold on. Hold on. Let me let me bring some things home here. Let me bring some things home here. Because sometimes black people are told that we're being all irrational. We're being irrational. We're doing this, we're doing that. Hold on. Hold on cuz I I want to get heavy on y'all for a minute. I'm trying to show you something and I'm because I'm over here in Dubai they got a lot of stuff blocked hold on y'all bear with me for a second I'm trying to show y'all something hold on okay my internet connection is a little funny style here hold on god damn it okay god damn it I'm okay okay I'm not trying to see this okay hold on guys I'm trying to show y'all something and because I'm over here 
in Dubai. They up here putting stuff on the page. Hold on one second. Uh, da, 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 da. Ho hopefully this will show what I'm trying to show. Hold on. Ah, the internet is acting up over here. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Ah, come on, man. And by the way, you guys can go to um, the page, the um, 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 the Indiegogo page for the Hidden History Museum. We're trying to get to that 300K by this evening. Okay, why are they, okay. I'm trying to show y'all something in there. Okay. Okay, I'll just show it on Google. Okay. Some of this stuff, I'm just going to have to show you the Google thing. Hold on. Okay, now I can show y'all this. Okay. Let me show y'all some things here. And again, my, my stream is going in and out. Hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Okay, hold on one second, one second. One second. Y'all bear with me. Uh, God dang it. Y'all bear with me. I'm trying to show some stuff here. Okay. All right. Okay, can y'all see me? Okay, we're still here. Okay, sorry about this. Sorry about this. There's some technical difficulties because of I'm in another country and they won't let me pull up stuff. All right. All right, but listen, listen, listen. Like I'm, I'm talking about this Blavatnik dude. Okay, so now listen, this Blavatnik dude, I'm very careful with my words, this guy is trying to buy up black LA, especially around the Crenshaw area. Coincidentally, that's what our brother Nipsey was doing. That's what he was doing with the Marathon store, which was very, um, which was right off Crenshaw. Now this Blavatnik guy, he owns something else, guys. This Blavatnik guy who's buying the Crenshaw Mall, he owns something else, guys. Guess what he owns? He owns Warner Music. He bought Warner Music. This Blavatnik guy, ladies and gentlemen, he bought Warner Music. Why is that significant? Why is that interesting? Why is that interesting? This Blavatnik guy who's trying to buy Crenshaw and help gentrify black Los Angeles, this guy bought Warner Music. He owns Warner Music. Guess who else is on Warner Music, by the way? Speaking of Warner Music, Nipsey is on Warner Music. Nipsey's catalog is owned by Warner Music Group. So that I just thought that was a very interesting coincidence. I, 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 again, I'm not saying anything. I'm just trying to show some coincidences there. That's a hell of a coincidence, ain't it? Now, we know Prince, Prince died. Um, they got half of his catalog now. They just announced that they made the family. They didn't finesse the family, Prince's family, into giving up um, half of that damn Prince catalog at, right after Prince died, okay? Prince died, so now these music groups, they scramble to get these billion-dollar catalogs. Now, Nipsey gets killed in very questionable ways, got killed in a very questionable manner after owning some property on off Crenshaw in Black L.A. The person who owns the label <laughs> is not only buying up the land in the area, they're making money off Nipsey's catalog. They're getting all this money. Nipsey's catalog blows up, and now this same dude is making all this money off Nipsey's catalog. That's a hell of a coincidence, guys. It's, it, it, it might just be a coincidence, but that's a hell of a coincidence. All right? That's a heck of a dang coincidence. Yeah. You know? So, again, that area, 
they know that it's about to be prime real estate. Number one, because they're about to, they, they're building that. And look, Nipsey was on my broadcast years ago. We talked about this. I want y'all to go back and listen to that interview that me and that I did with Nipsey. We talked about all the money that's being invested into that railway going in the middle of Crenshaw and how there's about to be a big economic boom. Me and Nipsey talked about this. Nipsey and I talked about this. There's a reason why I want to have this, our museum smack dab in the middle of Crenshaw. When, look, we, they were trying to get us to go to Beverly Hills. They were just, look, we had real estate developers telling us we should go on Melrose. We should go downtown. No. Crenshaw. I want this thing right on Crenshaw. Because, see, they got us thinking that this place is going to be worthless. Oh, it's just going to be so much danger. You want to put it somewhere where there's going to be a lot of... No, 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 no. I'm seeing in the future... I want it on Crenshaw. I know that's going to be a prime area. The Olympics is coming to Los Angeles 2028. That stadium in Inglewood, man, that's about to be a prime area. You there? We, we, we are trying to get in on that. And we're going to get, on, get in on that. Oh, yeah, and the dude who killed Nipsey the so-called hater, they still, this dude has still not been to trial. They've been delaying this dude's trial for the longest. And all, and then let's go there. Let's, let's go there. We're going to go there. The dude who killed Nipsey, all of a sudden he goes to jail. They still haven't put him on trial yet. And his lawyer happened to be Chris Darden. See, that's what people were like, where did Chris, where did, who paid Chris Darden to represent this dude? No, no. He wasn't doing it pro bono. Chris Darden is retired. So he's definitely doing, he's not doing it for real, for real pro bono. And Chris Darden was a prosecutor. So Chris Darden is all clicked in with the police. Nothing is, well, some of these coincidences, man, some things aren't really coincidences, guys. Some things are not really coincidences. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like they're trying to, the dude who killed Nipsey, they've been protecting this dude. When they delay a trial this long, they got this dude somewhere posted up eating lobster and steak somewhere, man, up in up in jail. They've been protecting this dude. Yeah? Yeah, Chris Darden did not come out of no damn retirement for free. Let's be clear. This dude, dude did a high-profile murder, then all of a sudden a high-profile lawyer is representing the dude. The dude's family didn't pay for that. But we know Chris Darden has always been a do-boy for the police and the white powers that be. Yeah? But listen, family. We, we have to understand what we're against, and we have to stand strong against that. Don't let that scare you. We're not going to let that scare us. We're going to have to let... We, we got to stand strong against that, stand tall against that. You understand? Did you see something I posted on um, on Twitter earlier about what Facebook tried to do? And we got it straight. We finally got it straight. But Facebook, we were running some ads for the Hidden History Museum. We we're running some ads. And then Facebook kind of gave me a temporary flag. They put this up talking about and this is just the ad for the museum. It's the same video commercial that you've all seen. You can see it on uh, my YouTube channel. But it says, ad can't run because it has to be in a special ad category. This ad appears to be for a housing opportunity and isn't identified as being in a special ad category, which is not, it's not a housing opportunity. This is not about no damn housing. This is about a black museum. Choosing the correct category is important. It's not a special category. It's just a regular ad for a museum. I didn't put it in a special category because it's not a special category. It has nothing to do with housing. So they said it's important that it, it complies with our non-discrimination advertising policy. So they're up here telling me about discrimination. So these people, man, what they did, they tried to say... And we appealed it because I started going in on them. I hit them up and I was, you know, we got all that straight. But they were trying to say that us promoting a black museum 
is discrimination. I said, oh, no, 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 no. Man, they got all types of white, not, not white, but Jewish and Asian museums that they promote all the time. They don't say that's discrimination and they don't make it, they don't make them put that in no special category. No, 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 no. The minute we start, you got, there's a Jewish museum on every corner in LA. There's Asian museums. I went up to the Bay Area. There's an Asian museum on every corner. They advertise their museums online all day. Asian history, Jewish history, uh, Middle Eastern history. We talk about a black museum and we get flagged. Well, that's discrimination. Man, give me a damn break. Yeah, all races have museums. And the sad thing is, not only do we have to battle these damn white supremacists and we got to battle these these online white supremacists who, who run the social media networks, we, got, we still got to battle the tethers who come in and try to talk down on our projects. See, that's the sick thing. That's the insidious thing. We still got to battle these self-hating Negroes who are comfortable with being on a plantation who don't want to see black people rise. They think, okay, if a black person, or if black people put something together, well then that means they gotta be responsible too. So they gotta sit up and talk down on it too. We're the only group who has Negroes like that. You will never see Asian people talking down on an Asian museum. We're the only people who got these tethers, these self-hating sambos, who sit up here and try to undermine any black progress because number one, they don't want to see another black ethnic group because they've been told that they're somehow different than us. They don't want to see us get stuff done that they couldn't get done, especially those from the motherland, unfortunately, because they've been told that they're the real black people, they're the real African people. And when we get stuff done, they feel like, okay, that makes us look bad because we didn't came from the motherland and we had all that land over there and they had to get stuff popping over here. So that messes with the insecurities that they already have. And then number two, a lot of these Negroes, it's all about attention. A lot of these dudes, and it's, to be honest, it's only a small handful of them. We're making great progress as we see. But a lot of these cats, they just want to be contrary for attention. They understand that if I say something stupid, if I just go against the grain, if I go off code, then everybody's going to be mad at me and then I'm going to get attention because that means people are looking at me. That's literally what it boils down to. When somebody says something dumb in the chat room or the comment section when we're trying to get some, some resources going and they say something stupid, that's really some look at me, look at me. They put them getting attention as a priority over the group. We shouldn't focus on them, exactly. That's why I've been blocking anybody who comes into the chat rooms talking crazy, you get immediately blocked. Anytime they pop in there with some bad faith arguments, well, what about um, we need to have a plebiscite? No, block. I would like to see a business proposal, block. We're not doing bad faith arguments. These are people who are trying to get attention for themselves. They're trying to distract us because they want attention. White supremacy has done a number on the brains of a lot of Negroes out here, and it has deprived them of an identity. And a lot of these Negroes hate the fact that they are not acknowledged, especially by white society. So they come around us attention whoring all the time. Whenever we try to notice, whenever we try to talk about something constructive, it's always somebody jumping in there saying something stupid just to get attention. And we have a culture of that that has to go. The stupid for attention culture. Yeah? It's all about attention. And negative attention is just as good as positive attention because at least they're thinking somebody's acknowledging me for the first time. My mama didn't acknowledge me. My daddy wasn't there. The women don't like me. Nobody looks at me. Please somebody acknowledge that I'm a human being. This is why it's important for our history to be taught so that people will have a certain level of esteem where they're not just desperate for any form of attention. You understand? Yeah, that plebiscite culture, all of that is just all, it's attention, look at me, look at me, I'm being contrary. And hopefully me being contrary will get y'all to argue with me and get me the attention I desperately need. 
that little sick childish nonsense is going to have to go. Yeah. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um, hit that link below, the Hidden History Museum. Hit the link below, ladies and gentlemen. Hit the link below. Get involved with the creation of the Hidden History Museum. We got 20 days to go. We're doing very, very good so far. Let me look at the board real quickly. Family, let's try to get to 300K by this evening. Or by, I don't know what, it, out here it's, I'm in Dubai, it's 8.35 in the morning. So by the morning time, I say it out there. What time is it out there back home, guys? So by the morning, guys, let's try to get to 300K on this. We can do it, and we're going to get it done. We're going to get it done, family. When you see people working this hard against us doing this, that means we're on the right path. When you see people working this hard against us, we are on the right path. And see, what we got to do, we got to get codified to get the community around projects like this. You know, when I was on my way over here, I was looking, it was a 15 hour flight, very long flight, so we were watching films, and I was watching a documentary about Dr. Martin Luther King and the FBI. And our good brother, man, that, that, that documentary really broke my heart, because I've always known about a lot of the sneaky things that they did to Dr. King, but some of the so-called white liberals, how they were in on it with, with undermining our brother Dr. King. See, our brother Malcolm X warned us about how the white liberals is just as bad. But I want y'all to understand, watching this documentary, they told a lot of truths in it. How the Kennedys, you know, they act like they were such liberal friends of black society. And I want y'all to understand, it was Bobby Kennedy that gave J. Edgar Hoover the green light to bug Martin Luther King, to tap his phone. That was Bobby Kennedy who gave J. Edgar Hoover the green light. And let's be clear, right now, white people, they don't like to give props to J. Edgar Hoover. They act like he didn't really exist, who was white LGBT, by the way. But back in the 60s, white people loved J. Edgar Hoover. And they love him now, they just don't say it. They were perfectly fine with J. Edgar Hoover targeting black people the way he was targeting black people in the 50s and 60s. They did a poll. They were perfectly fine with J. Edgar Hoover. They loved J. Edgar Hoover. White society loved him, loved him, loved him. They loved J. Edgar Hoover back then. And they do now. They just don't talk about him. And what they do, they make it seem like it was just the white Southerners that were going after Dr. King. Oh, it was the white Southerners, all oh, those evil white Southerners. But right before Dr. King was killed, it was the white liberal media, it was the white liberal media that was attacking Dr. King. It was the New York Times, the LA Times, they were all targeting Dr. King, they were demonizing Dr. King, setting him up to be assassinated. They were all on code, the liberal white supremacists were all on code with the so-called conservative white supremacists. Don't ever let nobody fool you. You think? Now, after they kill him, oh, we're going to have to name some streets after the great dog. Oh, stop it. Stop it. And also, in 2027, they're about to release some FBI footage, some audio footage of him allegedly being with women. And they, in, in 1977, they sealed these audio files from the FBI, and they're going to be released in 2027. So we're going to see there's going to be some more nonsense going on when that rolls around. So we're going to have to be prepared for that. So we're going to have to be prepared for that. This is why, again, we have to take control of our, of our history and our narrative so that we can tell the truth. We got to get on code. We have to get on code and start telling the truth about our narrative. Yang? But anyway, man, let me get up out of here, man. Again, go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Everybody get involved with the museum. We, we're getting very close. Let's keep the momentum going so we can get this museum popping like we need to get it popping. Um, you guys have a very good week. Y'all have a very productive week. And y'all follow me on my um, Instagram because I'll be going live on Instagram throughout the week while I'm here. So, man, respect and blessings.